Um, what are the benefits of the American disinterest in the world affairs? Um, uh, make sure to hit the like button and um, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in hearing what I have to say. Um, John Bolton's book, In the Room Where It All Happened, has triggered a controversy by suggesting 45 shows that are interested in the details of the foreign policy progress a process. In interviews, Bolton has called the squatter incompetent, yet we know he is. And then 45 basically tries to describe Bolton as a wacko and a disgruntled, boring fool. Well, 45 is a wacko and basically is a dumbass fool. But below in the surface, there is much more to the tension between Bolton and his former boss. The two represent opposing views over the appropriate role of the United States in the world. Like many, like many career foreign policy professionals, Bolton wants to operate glo must operate globally, taking sides in other people's conflicts and ensuring U.S. interests prevail. Opposite of this is the squatter's perspective, primarily articulated in his June 13th speech at West Point. We are ending the we are ending the era of endless wars. Indeed, this view also appears in in 45's attacks on Bolton. He likes dropping bombs on people and killing them. Bolton, I am sure, would rather characterize his perspective as um, intelligent engagement based on U.S. interests and caring about the world. Something that 45 doesn't do. Um, caring is usually considered a virtue when it comes to foreign policy. It's all too common for experts and commentators to lobby for more considerable attention or action to any number of issues. Yet, strangely, disinterest may be America's most essential an underappreciated asset, despite his many flaws as a squatter, this squ um, as a leader, the squatter seems to understand this instinctively, if imperfectly. Nations have 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 historically shown too much interest in one another. Just about every civilization has sought to intervene in the affairs of its neighbors. Often, meddling becomes pre um predation. Even conquest, as um as momentum builds and interest increases. Even distant cultures have had to remain leery as new technologies allowed states or empires to reject the power over the horizon. Core theories of international um, relations hinge on the assumption that predation is an inherent part of the politics of, of politics of nations. Under under anarchy, no nation is safe unless it imperils the security of others. This is uh, this is unfortunate for the capable of creating a security dilemma where states must arm to protect themselves in turn. Posing a risk to others, the situation is even worse for the weak, who must recruit protecting patrons or band together to balance powerful states. Influential voices anticipated um, balancing would occur in the wake of the Cold War, yet after the collapse of the Soviet Union, most countries choose to cooperate with the United States. The United States certainly could have turned the aggressor in the 1990s. Even the mere presence of preponderant power could have triggered a security dilemma. But America is different. We don't much care to um, to dominate or to meddle in the minor troubles of other nations. We don't thirst for co colonial possessions. Whatever America, whatever America's, whatever fault America has, the, and there are many, Americans can be trusted not to covet not to covet others' territories, and indeed to tr to tread rather lightly on their politics at home too. The fact is too well understood that other nations choose not to balance against the United States despite the historical risks. America could be trusted because Americans were disinterested most of most of the time, at least when blessed with com with competent, um, prudent leaders. This American virtue of disinterest is often cast in a negative light. However, resistance to military intervention stems from a healthy desire to live and let live. Of course, disinterest can be overdone, but Americans have shown they can have that they can care plenty when core interests are at stake. As any subject of pre of, of predation can attest. The problems of the world are much more keenly tied to ac to access rather than the deficit of interest. Like soccer hooligans, citizens of power of powerful em empires typically reveal a, re a revel in the ability of their nations to commit uh, to commit excess. A, retis a reticence to engage in foreign adventures is in fact um, a highly attractive national um, national attribute. Given exceptional power, it is indeed comforting to many globally. The Americans do not show more interest in their affairs. Um, explaining the U.S. restraint and the resulting trust and legitimacy that it, requ that it inspires um, is quite simple. Americans have, have never had a direct personal stake in the trivia of the rest of the world. At the end of World War I, as other victorious powers sought to dismember Germany and, um, and its allies, the then-President U.S. Woodrow Wilson advanced principles of national identity and liberty designed to ensure that the world would not witness a repeat of the world of the war to end all wars. 
This objective failed, in large part due to plundering and interventions by other great powers in the wake of World War II. America tried again, reluctantly accepting a larger role in the world affairs, mostly because the Soviet Union did not look disinterested enough. These efforts were successful in no small part because nations that were free to choose prefer, um, preferred the American approach to the Soviet alternative. A key element um, of the U.S. strategy has been the lack of d direct stake in the details of local conflicts. The United States did not seek to own, dominate, or, or dictate. Instead, the goal was to create safe, prosperous partners whose economies would make America rich and the world peaceful. When the Soviets installed puppets, America advocated self-determination and popular rule. Um, if it is this lack of interest in the details um, of local politics or territory that made the United States so attractive as a partner and ensured that rising U.S. power did not trigger anxious that triggered the anxious re um, reactions. A hallmark of successful U.S. foreign policy has thus been a paradox, paradoxical pattern of amb ambivalence. Precisely because Americans are reluctant to become involved, you know, the United States is sold out as a partner, lacking a stake in the in the resources, territory, or petty squabbles of other nations. That means that America can be trusted to operate in a legitimate, if often imperfect, manner. Critics chastise. Um, U.S. foreign policy for numerous reasons. The current administration is notable for its blunders, but few, ex but few accuse the United States of possessing designs on their territory or seeking to profit from plunder. We are preoccupied with their issues, and this disinterest is what makes America attractive and stabilizing, especially in an increasingly contentious world. While Americans should certainly remain aware of world affairs, Showing too much interest may well undermine the very quality that has secured a legitimacy. The risk is that foreign policy experts are not, disinter are not disinterested enough. It's basically, indeed, the excessive interest of other powers such as China and Russia continues to, um, continues to the bulk of the world's nations to seek protection from the disinterested um, superpower.